So very good day to one and all. I am Dr. Rohit Gopinath and today I will be talking about certain infectious diseases which are important from a surgeon's point of view. In a surgeon, infection is a dreaded complication. It is a major problem which can complicate even the simplest of procedures. So asepsis and antisepsis plays a very important role in surgical practice. So what is asepsis? Asepsis is carrying out a procedure without contamination by microbacteria or microorganisms and antisepsis is killing all the uh, microorganisms which have a potential of causing diseases using antiseptic agents. As far as our body is concerned, the skin, our skin or any other mucosal lining or other epi or mucosal lining, basically epithelial surfaces are the first barriers against infection. Other protective mechanisms like your macrophages, neutrophils, complement pathways, etc., immunoglobulins, etc., come into action only if the epithelial surfaces are breached. Presence of comorbidities like malnutrition, diabetes mellitus, obesity, immunosuppression can increase a person's susceptibility to infections. The severity of any infection and the course of any infection depends upon the virulence of the underlying organism, blood supply to the area involved, body immunity and support the antibiotics have been provided to the patient or not. Surgical site infection again can occur which can be both superficial or deep. We will be discussing about that as a topic later on. How do we grade any wound which is getting infected? So there is Southampton wound grading system which is used to grade infection of a wound. So grade 0 is a normally healing wound whereas grade 1 is a wound which has bruising mild erythema. Grade 2 is wherein there is severe erythema with other features of inflammation. Grade 3 is wherein there is a serious or a bloody discharge from the wound. Grade 4 if there is pus or a deep infection or tissue breakdown. So, other than the Southampton wound scoring system, we have what is called as an asepsis wound score system. So, which is used to assess wound infection. It is an objective scoring system which has the following parameters. So, A stands for additional treatment which can be antibiotics provided to the patient, incision and drainage of any pus that might be situated or located in the wound, wound debridement. S stands for serious discharge for 5 days or first 7 days of wound infection. E stands for erythema. P stands for a purulent fluid. S stands for separation of deep tissues. I stands for isolation of bacteria from the wound. And S stands for stay in the hospital of more than 14 days due to infection. So with this, we will now discuss about the various infections that are surgically important. The first such infection is a cellulitis. So cellulitis is basically a spreading inflammation of subcutaneous tissue and facial planes. It can be superficial or deep. It is common in the face, lower limb, upper limb and the scrotum which has a lot of loose subcutaneous area or loose subcutaneous tissue. The most common organisms causing cellulitis are streptococcus pyogenes and other gram positive organisms. So this is very important to know that cellulitis is mainly caused by gram positive organisms. So can gram negative organisms cause cellulitis? It can cause cellulitis but it, but it is comparatively rare. So the gram negative organisms which are capable of causing cellulitis includes Klebsiella, E. coli and Proteus. But as a dictum, the most common organisms causing cellulitis are gram positive organisms and among them the most common is streptococcus pyogenes. So a cellulitis can proceed either towards complete resolution with antibiotics or it can develop complications. So the common complications of cellulitis would be formation of an abscess which is called a pyogenic abscess, septicemia or necrotizing fasciitis. Classical clinical features of cellulitis would include fever, toxicity, there will be a swelling in, of the involved area which will usually be diffuse in nature, there is pain, tenderness, erythema and the skin over the area is warm and shiny. 
Because of an infection, there is regional lymphadenopathy. Commonly, cellulitis per se, there is no pus involved. However, once it progresses to a pyogenic abscess, then there is pus formation. So, in a cellulitis per se, there is no pus involved here. So, investigations would be, we can do a routine blood count to look at raised total counts with the polymorphonuclear uh, cells predominance. If there is septicemia, you can have altered uh, liver function tests as well as renal function tests. If the patient is diabetic, you need to assess the glycemic status of the patient. And a very common differential diagnosis of a cellulitis, particularly involving the leg and the calf region, would be a deep vein thrombosis. So, to rule out, to differentiate between a cellulitis and a deep vein thrombosis, we might have to resort to doing a venous Doppler. So, the treatment of any cellulitis is to reduce the edema, reduce the pain and to obliterate the infection. So, to reduce the edema, we can bring about limb elevation, glycerin max sulfate dressing which has a hygroscopic area, uh, component or a property, hence it is capable of reducing the edema. And to eliminate the infection, you need to start the person on antibiotics, commonly those which cover gram-positive organisms like penicillin, cephalosporins, etc. And any underlying comorbidities have to be brought under control. So, if the patient is a known diabetic, then the blood sugars have to be controlled. If the patient is going into septicemia, then the patient should be adequately monitored and special care in the form of providing the patient with uh, dialysis if there is renal, uh, renal failure, ventilatory support if the patient is developing distress, all this should be provided.